In the last video, we talked about capacitor start induction motors and the difficulty in trying to control their speed. I was very much interested in motors with heavy starting torques like a washing machine that might have to start full of clothes or a dryer. Anything that has a high load when it starts generally has a separate starter winding and is usually a capacitor start, although there are other ways of starting those motors. They also need to disconnect the starter winding and I talked a little bit about in the last video uh, some of the issues with lowering the speed in those motors. You might kick the starter winding back on, you might overheat the motor, things like that. But what about motors that don't have a separate starter winding like these shaded pole motors? And there are a few other types as well. There's the permanent split capacitor motor uh, that can also be uh, speed controlled successfully uh, because of the way they operate although they are still induction motors. And that's gonna be the focus of this video. So I wanna take apart this motor and show you this shaded pole induction motor. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, how this motor is speed controlled. All right, now that we've got it open, you can see here on the back, there are multiple speeds. This is something that almost all of us have seen, right? We've all seen these variable speed motors. So how do you get this low, medium, and high? Well, looking at the switch, we can see that there are multiple wires coming out of it, which correspond to the different settings here on the back. And these wires wrap around and go into this coil. Now you guys have seen this before. If you remember from earlier in the series, I showed you another shaded pole motor, this guy. And you can see there's a coil there. These two leads coming out correspond to the two ends of this wire. And you can see there's a lot of turns there. More coils of wire means you're going to get a stronger magnetic field, which in the end is going to give you a greater torque on the rotor. But what if you didn't want all of the available torque? What if you only wanted half of the coils? Or say two-thirds of the coils? Well, that's the trick. So two of these wires go to the two ends, just like the one I've shown you in previous videos. But then you've got two more wires, one that corresponds to a low setting, which only gives you some of the coils, a medium setting, which gives you, you know, maybe two thirds of the coils. And then the last one gives you the full coil. And that gives you multiple speeds. I told you in a previous video that lowering the voltage will also reduce the strength of the magnetic field. And so you will get a similar effect here. If you lower the voltage to a shaded pole motor, you should get variable speed, which is exactly what we're trying to get here, except the variable speed is built right into the body of the motor so that it can receive a constant supply of voltage. You don't have to mess with that. You just mess with the strength of the magnetic field that's produced. So to show you that this is true, I'm going to take this guy and hook it up Let's vary the voltage. All right, my transformer is set to 120 volts. Let's plug in our fan. Let's see about lowering the voltage here. And you can tell a difference pretty much immediately. And at this point, there's not enough torque to turn the fan. If you want to control the speed of a fan per se, something like this type of motor, or even in this application where the winding is actually just tapped at different places, then you can use voltage control to lower the speed because the torque required to spin the fan increases as the speed increases. Something that's harmful in an application where you need a lot of power is actually perfect for a fan application because when you need more power, you want to max out the voltage. Need less power, you turn it down and weaken the motor, and it will spin up to the point where the torque supplied by the motor matches uh, the torque required to turn the fan. Now, I've got another fan I want to show you. I grabbed this fan from the house. This thing has been in the closet for years and we never use it. So I decided to sacrifice it for you guys. So you can see here, uh, very similar application to what we had before, except this guy uh, oscillates back and forth. Let's take a look at that mechanism. I 
kind of has the body of a shaded pole motor looking at this part right here but then seeing those coils in there wrapped around uh, it looks a little bit different the oscillating mechanism uh, maybe we'll come back to that but we have that same switch on the top and the same kind of leads coming out of it so I'm willing to bet that this guy works the same way as you can see the switches come out to various wires and then those feed into the motor all right we came this far let's open it up all right so as you can see it's definitely an induction motor there's no electrical connection for the rotor and you can see the bars the aluminum bars that we described in previous videos some people refer to these bars as being shorted out at the two ends. I don't like to use that terminology because short, to call it a short, implies that the path, the electricity has taken a path you didn't intend. And in this case, it's exactly what we want. We want a nice, strong current from one side to the other. And we can see the coils here. And there's your bearing down in the bottom. So again, the construction is really simple, right? We have our laminated iron plates, which help to en enhance the magnetic field. All right, so you can see down at the bottom, there are three wires coming in. And those go around, and those are wired, looks like they are wired directly to different coils. So it looks very similar to the shaded pole motor, but it's not. As you can see, there's a, st there's a capacitor right here on the side. That lets me know that there's a starter winding in here. But it looks like there's nothing to disconnect the starter winding. So this is so this is most likely a PSC, permanent split capacitor motor. And having a separate starter winding with a capacitor offsets the magnetic field just enough in that sec in that starter winding to give you the starting torque that we discussed in series one. The reason that all motors aren't like this, like the motor that I showed you before is because the amount of starting torque that you can get using this method is very low. So it's great for a fan. So there you go, two examples of motors that can be run with voltage control. One more thing I want to show you guys is in the first video, I told you that the light dimmer switch was triac based. And here you can see the inner workings of it. The three tabs for the potentiometer here. The on off switch connections and what I believe to be a triac. I have looked up this number. I'll put that put a better picture of it on the screen here. Maybe you guys can help me find it just to confirm. Uh, everything that I've looked up so far has said that these are triac based and that's basically you know what it should look like but uh, I haven't been able to confirm that that part number is actually a triac so hopefully you guys can help me out with that in the comments. So motors like this that have very low starting torque um, and they don't have a separate starter winding or they may have a separate starter winding that stays connected, it's not disconnected. Those motors are almost always in fans. But fans are so common that uh, this video was worth making because it prompted a lot of questions about induction motors. So hopefully that brings your understanding a little bit further along. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment with any more questions. I'm planning one more video, it might be two, but I'm planning one more video for this question series where I'm going to try to answer several questions in one video. Uh, it's just this one was such a deep and detailed question that I think I thought this topic required a video by itself. Some of the other ones will be consolidated together. If you're not a subscriber yet, uh, no fear, you can click this button down here and join my little community. If you want something else to watch while you wait for the next video, I'll put a couple playlists here on the screen. Hopefully that'll keep you busy until I can get back in the shop. Until then, thanks for watching.